Hey guys, Dave with Moneyology here. Hope everyone is having a great weekend. Today is July 14th, 2019, and this is the Uranium Sector Review. I wasn't going to shoot a video today because I wanted the noise from Section 232, the rumors that had come out on Friday that caused a lot of volatility in a lot, in a lot of names. I wanted the volatility to play itself out, but I felt it was important for me just to have a conversation with you guys about my perspective on what's taking place because for, for various reasons, a lot of you folks are finding my videos to be instructive, and I appreciate your support, and I appreciate your feedback. So here are my overall thoughts. Uh, first and foremost, Section 232, which was filed by Energy Fuels and uh, Uranium Energy, uh, was was an attempt by those companies to to kind of shed light on the uranium industry in the United States and how, how vital it is and how important it is to national security and yet how challenged these companies are because of the various different uh, global machinations on, on uranium price where global producers are able to use their currency manipulations and, and depreciated currencies to lower the price of uranium still be profitable thereby uh, putting U.S. and domestic producers in, in, in bad shape. Bottom line, so they, they go to the Trump administration, they, they request a, a quota system, and that was strongly considered, and at the end of the day, the Trump administration decided against a tariff. However, uh, that was the initial news on Friday that led to a dump of the U.S. domestic producers, or uh, and, and not necessarily producers, but domestic miners. However, a major port part of this release was that there was going to be a group commission to discuss the various national security interests, including from a mining perspective. And in my opinion, that's incredibly bullish. And we'll see the results of, of this on Monday and throughout the rest of the week in terms of how uh, energy, energy fuels and uranium energy, UEC, how they recover, if at all, uh, this week and, and beyond. However, the most important thing that Section 232 did was that it caused a inefficiency in the market where contracts were not being done and price of uranium effectively wasn't moving uh, because of the indecision that was created by this. And now that was now that that was effectively taken off the market, you saw how the uranium price took off, and I'll show you in, in momentarily. But I think that this is going to be a huge catalyst for. Uh, for upward price movement in uranium, and it's going to help all miners across the world, all producers, all uh, speculative miners. And and when the uranium price goes up, because supply is simply not there and demand is ever increasing, and uh, the price will 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 rise. I, and I think sooner rather than later, we're going to see a massive price increase in the price of uranium. We're going to see it probably go above 30 and then before you know it it might be th 40 and 50 so uh, and that will help everybody and 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 so from my standpoint I don't understand why the US producers fell so hard and uh, we'll see what happens in the coming days so let's take a look from a technical perspective and see if we can glean some you know, wisdom from from the overall charts and one one additional and very very important point I would say is if you were hurt on Friday if your portfolio was down 30 40 percent if you thought about you had thoughts coming coming through your mind about why am i invested in the markets why i can't can't take this pain if you were stopped out of these positions and you don't know whether you should jump back in or where you should go if you're going on twitter and you're looking for people who who are shouting uh, their perspectives on various different names and that's the basis for your investing then you probably shouldn't be invested if you are, if you had too much or your entire portfolio in one or two positions in one country, in one sector, you were probably making, you were, you were making a very big mistake. And this is going to be a very painful, potentially not as painful, hopefully, given Monday's price action. But that's a painful price lesson. But I think it's an important one. You, you have to be diversified in multiple companies, in multiple geographic regions, in multiple sectors. Uh, and and otherwise you're just gonna you you might get lucky and you might do really well but in the end you're gonna end up hurting yourself and I've learned the hard way and I'm hoping that these videos will kind of help you and understand your own uh, psychology because the one thing I did notice over the last couple of weeks is too many people thought that this was an inevitability too many people thought that uranium would explode to the upside and that there would be millionaires 
uh, galore. I, I heard of people talking about yachts and, and, and various different in, you know play vehicles that they would be buying based on their profits. It shouldn't be that easy. And Friday was a prime example of why that's the case. Investing is not easy. Otherwise, everybody would do it and do it successfully. So anyway, uh, here's, here's my watch list. And as you can see, uh, Friday was a bloodbath in the, the U.S. names, your energy, Encore, on Anfield, Azarga, uh, Laramide, kind of has some uh, American properties. Um, and just looking at this right now. Here we go. And uranium energy as well uh, here. But bottom line is bloody week. On the other hand, you had a very interesting shift where you had the Australian names, uh, Canadian names over here and African names really starting to pick up uh, pick up and that's going to be a very interesting development uh, going forward but the most important thing that people are forgetting or some folks are forgetting is it ultimately comes down to what's the price of uranium so this is the best uh, best chartable indicator of the price of uranium and notice what happened on on Friday I mean this was effectively all of Friday we broke above the 50 RSI level we had a massive price move for the week close to 5% and, and this can be the beginning of a, of a cup and handle base breakout and uh, if that's the case and I firmly believe that it is we're gonna see a very sharp rise in all equities across the board obviously the ones with a fun, better fundamental picture more fundamental uh, leverage to the price of uranium will do better but nonetheless, the next price target here is that five zone. It's well above the nine and 18 month moving averages now, which are serving as support. And I could see a rush to the price of uranium uh, like, like we've seen, like we basically saw in 2004 to 2007. And if that happens, look, we're above the 50 RSI level on the monthly as well. If that happens, that's incredible. And uh, good luck to everybody in the space. So let's take a look at the names in alphabetical order. So ALX Uranium Corp, uh, it's just wedging here and it's a bullish wedge as price goes lower and lower. Uh, RSI is building a stair step, stair step pattern higher and it's on the verge it seems to me of breaking above the 50 RSI level with some very strong trend line support. If that happens uh, the next price move would, would be towards that uh, 10 cent zone. Anfield Energy so this one clearly broke down and uh, it was tagging, it was also creating some positive divergence, but fundamentals, the end of the day, uh, ruled the day. And that's to be expected because ultimately prices move because of underlying fundamentals, not technicals uh, in the long run. And it looks like unless there's a, a major bounce on Monday, and I, and I firmly expect that there will be, but I can't predict the future. I think that this is going to make a move towards that 15 cent zone. Uh, perhaps consolidate a while and then eventually I think break higher as uranium prices uh, rebound and, and move to the upside. Appia Energy, this one looks great. It looks like a cup and handle uh, just waiting for that catalyst and perhaps we had it on Friday but waiting for that catalyst to break above this bullish uh, bullish wedge, the bullish uh, bullish flag rather and if it breaks above that 33 cent level next price target would be that 41 cent neckline. Azarga is one that clearly was hit by Friday's news. It was undeniably breaking out, and although it found some resistance at that 61 level, uh, it it fell it fell hard, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how how Monday plays out it, un, until it breaks back above this uh, trend line. From a technical perspective, it's bearish, but uh, we, we'll have to see. Fundamentally, there's some very nice. Uh, there's a nice thesis to this name, but I'll let, uh, I'll let you folks do your due diligence on that one. Uh, Azincourt Uranium, uh, this one is, uh, this one is a Athabasca Basin property, exploration property, and it, even despite positive results and drilling results, this one got hammered down a bit. Clearly someone decided to sell their position. I think this is an interesting uh, opportunity to add long right about here, uh, but again, from a technical perspective, until it breaks this downtrend there's really nothing to see blue sky uranium this one's act this is an argentinian uh uranium play and this one has been consolidating bullish consolidation 
broke out of this consolidation in early 2019. We've back tested it and now it looks like we're basing to break out above that level. So I want to see a break above the 13, 26 week moving averages around that 16 cent level. If we can break above there, uh, which would coincide with that 50 RSI breakout, I think the next target would be 32 and a half. It's got a lot of upside, but a lot depends on uh, obviously the price of uranium. Now Cameco, here's the elephant in the room and this chart looks absolutely gorgeous. Uh, it's been just noisy basing rounded bottom consolidation right, right around here and until frankly it breaks above 13 there's really nothing to see but what's happening here is you had one two three four five six seven basically seven or eight weeks <coughs> of consecutive price gains after we suggested that this would be a great level to initiate a position now we firmly closed on Friday despite the news on 232 uh, we closed positive for the week and uh, you know it's an Athabasca region play but at the same time they've got a lot of US properties and Cameco in my opinion will benefit most from from positive upside trajectory in uranium and because they'll be able to buy a lot of these names such as Anfield such as uh, uh, Zarga and so on uh, in the in the US at a, at a discount to the potential of those particular locations if uranium goes to 50, 60, 70, and so on. They have the capital to do this now. And and so again, we're, we're, we've got the moving averages now serving as support. We're still in the downtrend technically, but if we break above this downtrend, which we appear to be ready to do, we can see a move straight towards that 13 level and then before any real resistance is found. Notice PPO is curling towards a break above zero. Can Alaska, this one got hit down. It, it hit, got hit down by this trend line. So that's one of the things I point out. When you're when you're in a confluence of resistance factors where you've got the trend line, you've got the 50 RSI, a pullback is, is definitely possible. This is still a back test, if, if you will. So you want to see this 25 cent level hold, uh, maybe base around here for a little bit and then move higher. I think it eventually... It does make a move towards that 40, 40, 45 level, uh, 45 cent level. Pardon my dog. But uh, but but right now it's it's showing some weakness here. Uh, Deep yellow. This one is a gorgeous gorgeous breakout right now that's taking place from a momentum perspective, and it it still needs to show itself from a price perspective. But uh, look at this breakout here, and price will follow. I, I can uh, almost certainly tell you with certainty that price fo t fo follows momentum and so a break above 27 probably uh, leads towards a price breakout of uh, towards that 39 cent zone. Denison, so this one was in this bullish pennant pattern here where it was just coiling for a break up or down and clearly on Friday it, it told us that it wants to move to the upside. And uh, if this is going to be confirmed this week, it would be a great week to, to have an, another up move towards that 70 cent zone. Uh, it back tested that 50 level from the upside, found support, and looks like it wants to be moving higher. You've got PPO curling above zero, and a lot of, a lot of positive indicators for Denison right now. Encore was hit. It's another U.S. US uh, location. Um, and uh, so it, it, was, it was hit. Uh, with with the speculation on the 232, uh, but it found some support here, and that was actually positive to see. It didn't close at the end of at the at the lows of the week. It's still in this bullish consolidation, bullish flag consolidation, and I think this one actually benefits uh, more so than most companies from this decision because the price of uranium will move higher as a result of the resolution. At the same time, the Trump administration, as I mentioned earlier, is going to create a lot of cons or going to give a lot of consideration towards helping miners uh, in the U.S. So in the end, the U.S. miners might be the best play of all. Now, many folks will disagree with me, but I think that mm -hmm. there's a huge opportunity in, in the safest jurisdiction with some of the lowest cost production and investment opportunity. I think U.S. miners, especially after Friday's discount, could, could present one of the best long term opportunities. Energy fuels, so this one is a case study in how technical analysis is not perfect. Nothing uh, ever is. Fundamentals obviously uh, rule the day. You had this nice basing, pat, rounded bottom here. You had 
uh, beautiful cup and handle ready to go and then you just broke down look at the volume here massive volume uh, from a technical perspective you back tested you back tested this breakout we need to hold this 30 31 level right now uh, and and mo Monday will be crucial you know you might you might see another push down but as long as it holds that 150 level I think we'll eventually bounce and and, and move back higher uh, but I'm, I'm very, very interested to see what takes place on Monday. But from a technical perspective, as of this conversation, doesn't look good. Vision 3.0. Uh, this one, as I pointed out in previous videos, one of the best looking charts from a very, very nice bottoming bounce play. It's an Athabasca region uh, disco explorer. And if they hit on any of their drill holes that they're doing in their multiple programs, this can pop and pop hard. Uh, towards 25 cents possibly even as high as 45 cents I really like the upside here and the technical setup fission uranium another one of these Canadian plays that can really benefit from the perceived weakness in, of investing in the US sector it's been bottoming here you've got PPO now above zero you see that despite kind of a triple bottom momentum has created positive divergence every one of those rounds legs of this bottom so this can really pop. We we initiated a position long on fr on, on Thursday actually, and I'm very happy that it performed well on Friday. Forces Metals, uh, Canadian name, uh, kind of a cup and handle here, and similar to a lot of other uh, charts that we've seen, uh, it's it's held strong. It held strong on Friday, and frankly, this will be a beneficiary of higher uranium prices, and I expect a move towards that 25 cent zone sooner rather than later. Forum Energy, this one looks very, very nice. Uh, we, we kind of pulled back here. And the one thing I'll point out is that you, momentum is not as strong right now as it was when we make, made the first break towards $0.08. Cents. So further consolidation is very possible between $0.05 cents and $0.06. Cents. Uh, but ultimately, this looks and is well positioned towards a move uh, higher, probably towards that $0.17 to $0.20 cent zone. Global Atomic, so just... just uh, Going through the the fin, FinTwit community, I uh, Global Atomic seems to be one of the best, most popular names amongst those that really have studied the fundamentals. And uh, and if that's the case, this one obviously from a technical perspective looks fantastic. It broke out of this bullish pennant and it hasn't really looked back. That as I mentioned in previous videos, next price target is sixty cents, and thereafter once it breaks out, uh, could go much much higher. I really like this name. The technical setup is there. And uh, the the one thing I'll I'll say is that I don't I don't like the from a fundamental perspective the African jurisdiction, uh, but this one is this is a name that's going to do incredibly well uh, should should uranium continue to move higher. Govx uranium another African play that we really like cup and handle breakout move towards 22 is definitely uh, in the cards and then thereafter looks like it's setting up for a major upside potentially to 33 possibly to 44 cents. Uh, in the near term, Greenland mineral, <coughs> Minerals and Energy, beautiful setup. Looks like it wants to make a move towards that 16 level. We really like uh, just every every single part of this chart says it's it's moving higher. ISO Energy. So this one, a bit of indecision around that 60 level. Understandably, there's some resistance, but uh, the setup here is strong. So it might consolidate here for a while, or it might break higher towards that 80 cent zone. But ultimately. Uh, it's it's making a higher high in momentum. The one thing I'll point out, uh, part of my approach is looking at past momentum breakdowns. And the last time we broke down from 66 high was around here. And we're approaching that level, so I would expect some consolidation, if not uh, pullback altogether around these prices. But if it breaks up above that 61 level, then, then say sayonara, and it's likely headed towards that 90 cent level, if not higher. Laramide Resources. So this has Canadian properties and has a U.S. property, and so it was dragged down as well. But it's consolidating here, and if it holds this level, I, ex I expect it to rally back higher. Uh, but if it breaks down, uh, I could see a move towards that 24 cent zone that uh, should should lead to, to support. Next Gen Energy, another one like Fission. It's got a really good resource base, and it's just been doing nothing, and frankly, just not not as sexy. But from a fundamental perspective, this is a great company long term that may do as well as any other in a uranium resurgence. 
Notice this breakout above the 50 RSI level, above the downtrend resistance. This one is going to do exceptionally well. Next price target 2.1, and then once that breaks out, I think that's when that's when uh, the bull move is really going to come into full gear. Paladin Energy. So this one I pointed out before. Uh, this is a really nice coiling pattern, and sure enough, we broke out here. Uh, we we're, we closed the week above the 50 level of RSI. PPO is above zero. I really like the setup here. I think this is going to double, um, if not triple, in the coming weeks and months. And so there's tremendous upside with a company uh, that's in a very good jurisdiction in Australia that has really good resources in the ground, ready to to perform well should uranium uh, move move to the upside. Plateau Energy. This one is this is a company that I'm not sure why it's not charted right now, but bottom line is. This this particular name is uh, Peru Peruvian mine, and it's it's doing really well. It broke out of this downtrend uh, kind of coiling pattern, and uh, a bullish wedge was formed here. And now we're above the the 26 week moving average. The 13 week moving average is is curling higher. So we might consolidate here for a while. We're back testing that 50 level, but I think this is making a move towards that 170 area. So that's a double, uh, more than a double from here. And and I think it actually may move higher because notice this is this is what it does consistently. So it, it coils and then breaks out to the upside. Really good properties on this particular name. Pure Point Uranium, one of our favorite charts as well, is is just this consolidation and and notice the week we close the week above the above the neckline of the bullish flag with with the moving averages curling golden crossing right below it as support. You've got PPO breaking higher. You got RSI momentum breaking higher, and this one looks like it want it's going to make a move towards that 10 to 14 zone. So a lot of short short term upside uh, from a technical perspective here. Sky Harbor, another one of those names like Next Gen and Fission and Denison that has a very good base and it's been consolidating with positive divergence. Momentum has not been going lower, even as price has been kind of getting hit. Uh, at any point in time, and it could happen as early as this week, I can I can see a move towards that 55 level. But this is a great risk reward entry with a stop loss around the 27 and a half area and an upside at a, at a minimum to 55. Texas Mineral Resources. Uh, this this chart looks great right now. It's setting up for a move above this the neckline of this bull flag. I can see a retest of that 56, 57 area and uh, significant upside thereafter. And this, this, is, this is as much a, of a rare earth play as it is uh, a, a, a uranium play. UEX Corp, uh, this one I was surprised. It didn't do as well as I thought it would, uh, given the news on Friday that kind of hit the US producers. But uh, it's still consolidating, and it's finding some difficulty breaking above the 50 RSI level. But once it breaks above that 19 cent zone, there's tremendous upside here, and I really like the fundamental potential of this company. Here's your energy, one of the names hit. Uh, if it can, if there's continued downside, uh, I think that 50 level, 50 cent level will will still serve as strong support. Uh, but again, I think Monday we might see a very nice pop to the upside, where where it heads back towards that 80 cents, uh, 80 cent level. UEC. I want to say a couple things about this one because I see a lot of negative energy toward this particular name and Amir Adnani. And I'm not sure if that's because they've been hit over the years since 2015, haven't really done much to the upside. But I will say I've, I've spoken to Amir and I followed his work over the years. He's a very good CEO and I will disagree with anyone, respectfully disagree with anyone who says otherwise. Uh, when you run a company that's that is is more of a in near production uh, level, uh, you're gonna have debt, and you're gonna have to and you're gonna have to find a way to support the company, and that sometimes means dilution. But this is not a company that's been just throwing their money around like crazy, and it's very well positioned for uranium price increase. And should it occur, uh, I think that this one is well positioned for a move back towards that three level. And, and I don't think the 232 decision hurt this company, uh, but obviously price, it was knocked down and it's going to take some time to recover unless we have a, a, a very quick um, back a move back on Monday. So 
technically this one is is beaten down I, I i can't deny it but from a fundamental perspective it is in one of the safest jurisdictions and it's in the safest jurisdiction in the world it has some of the best properties in the world and it's some of the properties are very close to production uh capacity they're fully permitted and 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 so this one is perhaps the most leveraged to near-term upside in the, in the market in the u.s so i you know a lot of folks are ripping this name but I will say that at one dollar level, that presents a great opportunity to go long, and if it breaks lower, uh, perhaps a move towards seventy is possible. But uh, if that happens, I'll be buying options hand over fist. A couple more names: uh, Virginia Energy Resources. I, I want to thank um, Brian Lax. Uh, he's a portfolio manager. Uh, shout out to you, Brian. Um, you told me about this name, and I w was not familiar with it. This is a play in Virginia. Now, it, it got hammered over the last couple of uh, months due to a uh, Supreme Court decision or, or a legal decision that did not allow it to, to mine in the jurisdiction that it's in. But it has one of the best resources in the U.S. And, and their management is looking at different options. And now, with the Trump decision to consider all methods of helping uh, U.S. miners. This one could benefit perhaps the most from any of the names. So it's finding support at that 38 level. Let's see if it consolidates here a while and, and perhaps finds its legs and, and, and moves higher. Finally, Western Uranium. Uh, this one was, was hit this week, uh, almost tested the bottom boundary of this bullish flag, and it, it closed the week near its highs. And so it, it just said, it, it looks to me like it's setting up for a move higher. But uh, but until it breaks out above this upper trend line, it's kind of in consolidation zone. So overall, guys, this has been a longer video. I appreciate the the patience. Uh, overall, I just I just think that we just have to not be so emotional about the moves in in the space. Uh, as 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 Uranium Insider pointed out, uh, the last bull run had sharp declines of 30 to 50 to 70 percent. And, and and at the end of the day, you saw 3,000% returns in, in many names. So I think that we have to be patient. We have to know why we're in position. And we have to have uh, strong, strong uh, considerations when we're getting out. So uh, this is a great learning lesson. And I appreciate any feedback. Feel free to respond, private message me. And uh, best of luck. Hopefully Monday and next week is, is going to be much better than Friday was. And hopefully the price of uranium just continues to move up from here. Have a great week.